Happy holidays from five after midnight. Krampus is watching you. One. When I was 18, I left Kentucky and went to college at Kansas. When I went out in July, my parents drove me and my stuff out, left me, and went back home. I didn't have a car on campus for the first couple of months. At Thanksgiving, I flew home and ended up driving my car back about an eight and a half hour drive down Interstate 6470 straight across. On the way, later at night, I stopped and got some food at a Denny's. It was the middle of the night, and I filled up at an old gas station across the street. The pumps were ancient, and there was this old man working there. And he came out to the full service lane and filled up my car, and when I handed him my credit card, he said I had to come inside, so I did, and I grabbed a soda too. He ran the card on one of those old machines with the paper slide and handed me the carbon copy to sign. I went on my way and I did notice after a while that the 20 bucks in gas never appeared on my credit card. But I just assumed it being an old machine that maybe it didn't process it until the end of the month or something. It didn't really bother me anyway, it was just 20 bucks. A few weeks later, I decided to drive home for Christmas and I invited one of my roommates, whose family was out in the country for the holidays, uh, to come home with me. He mentioned he was hungry, and I tell him that I know where there's a Denny's just up the road. So we pull off at the same place that I was before, but it was about 5 p.m. this time, and I noticed that the filling station that was across the street was boarded up with weeds growing through the pavement. I asked the waitress when it was closed, and she mentioned that it had been closed for about four to five years, and she said it was too expensive to put the new tanks in the ground, so the owner closed up shop. My roommate looked at me like I was crazy when I told him that I had literally just stopped there and gotten gas at that station a month before. I told my family the story when I got home, and they just told me that I had gotten off at the wrong exit. I seem to recall details when driving pretty well, and this still creeps me out quite a bit to this day though. Two. I had a stalker for about two years. It started at my first apartment when I was 18. He would do little stuff like stand on my porch and tap on the windows or walk around the backyard and I could tell because there was lots of rocks back there that you could hear sloshing around. I called the cops and they checked it out and said that they didn't see anything. Plus, I started tuning it out and just figuring it was a wild animal or a passerby since it was a row house and there was lots of neighbors. After about six months, me and my boyfriend decided to go see a concert out of town. We left our dogs in the basement and hid the key to the house outside because my brother would come by a few times a day and let the dogs out. When we got home, things started getting weird. I should mention three things. One was that my bedroom had the door to the attic inside it with one of those chain locks on it, and two, the next door apartment was abandoned, and three, we never went into the attic because it had holes in the floor. At night, we started hearing noises in the attic, like it sounded like footsteps, and the dogs would growl at the door all night. We didn't find out what the noises were until we moved out. We went upstairs to get our Christmas decorations, and someone had broken the brick walls apart that separated the two apartments. The other apartment had a bed in the attic and other miscellaneous stuff. We called the lad who got the cops in, and we didn't have any more strange things happen until about four months into moving into the new place, which is when it really got bad. My underwear started coming up missing in the house, and it would look like it was being rooted through. 
The bad thing about the new house was that it didn't lock on the side door, but my boyfriend nailed the door shut. I go outside one night to let the dogs out, and there is a guy outside on the road, and he starts saying my name over and over and over again. I go inside and call the cops, but sure enough, he's not there when they get there, but at night, I can still see him walking up and down our road. One night, my boyfriend had to work until midnight, and my roommate won't be home until 6 a.m., so I am at home alone for three hours. Since I'm scared to sleep alone, I lock all the doors and turn on the bathroom light and turn on the TV and my fan. I also lock the dogs in my room with me. About an hour after falling asleep, I'm awakened by the dogs barking loudly, but it doesn't sound like they're in my room anymore. So I sit up and everything is shut off, and my boyfriend walks in the room and informs me that he is home early and not to worry, the power is just out. So I fell back asleep, until two hours later when my boyfriend comes in the room and asks why everything is off and why the dogs are locked in my roommate's room and one of the dogs is bleeding. I jump up out of bed and call the cops at which point I noticed semen on my bed. Turns out the guy had climbed through a window and used a hobby pin to break into my room. He beat my one dog with a bat, hence why he was bleeding. The cops found him hiding in the neighbor's shed. The dog was okay. Number three. Back when I was about six or seven, we were visiting my aunt for Christmas, who had just divorced her husband. He was a hot-headed Czechoslovakian guy who had just started to go a little off the deep end. He called the house multiple times over the past few days, threatening my aunt, but nothing had ever come from it. My parents and I had just immigrated to Canada, where this story was taking place. So we were spending the night at my aunt's before our house was ready. My aunt was sitting in the den and looking up, and she saw her ex coming towards the house with a hunting rifle. She screamed, and my dad, with balls of fucking steel, flew into action, locking the door and running myself, my aunt, and my mom up the stairs and locking us in a room. We put a dresser in front of the door while my dad grabbed a buck knife and ran downstairs. The rest of the story I only know as it's been told to me, but basically my mom called the police from the upstairs phone, but my aunt's ex busted the door uh, near where my dad was hiding. My dad jumped him and they basically got into a fist fight in the foyer until the cops had shown up. I know my aunt's ex dropped the gun when he got hit, but I'm not sure what happened to the knife. My dad will not confirm to this day if he stabbed him or not. The police showed up and arrested my aunt's ex, but the scariest part was for sure that my aunt's ex's father was found hiding in the backyard when the police did a sweep of the house. He was an old abusive drunk that hated my aunt, and he had been waiting in the backyard with a knife, hoping that we would have run out there. He ended up getting deported, and my aunt's ex went to jail and had a restraining order for years to come, although he still claims they only wanted to scare us. It was a horrifying experience, hearing the commotion from downstairs while we were hiding away. All I know is because of my dad's bravery and the beating he must have put on that guy, based on the screams that we heard, we are safe to this day. In the early 80s, my dad dated and almost married Jane. Jane really loved my dad. Jane's mom also really loved my dad. And both women had a difficult time with the breakup, even a decade later. Part of Jane's problem was the frequent use of various substances. 
She broke into the mobile home my parents rented for their first year of marriage, rearranged items in the kitchen and the bathroom. She did the same shit a few years later at a different residence, but left a tube of red lipstick on the couch and a cold Dr. Pepper on the kitchen counter. My parents were diehard Mountain Dew consumers. If she was willing enough to break in, it was a safe bet that she was also driving by and watching for my parents uh, when they were coming and going. There were a few dozen phone calls from her, her calling and saying nothing, hanging up. My dad never talked about any direct interactions in this time period, but I wouldn't be surprised if she had publicly approached him and done something crazy. Jane's mother was equally whacked out. During a Christmas shopping trip at the local Walmart, I kept seeing the same older woman around the store. I would have been about nine when this happened. This was our big gift bag shopping trip where we made about 20 gift sets. We had a multiple areas of the store and were there for quite a while. Later that night, my dad got a call from Jane's mother. She was sobbing into the phone and apologizing for following us around the store. She felt that we were supposed to be her grandchildren and blabbered a bunch of nonsense to him. The next summer, my brother and I were playing in the backyard when a woman in khakis, a polo shirt and sunglasses came strolling up with a clipboard. She says, hi guys, and began looking at a, the power meter standing about 20 feet away from us. My mom had been doing laundry, walked by a window, saw the woman and came outside. She asked the woman how she was. The lady gave a friendly reply. She left after writing down a few more notes onto the clipboard, but never specifically identified herself or the company. The driveway was at the front of the house and not visible from the backyard. It had been a quick interaction and did not seem out of the ordinary. Three days later, the power company's meter guy actually shows up, my mom having seen the woman with the clipboard, asks who she is and demands identification. The man with the power company verified that there had not been anyone to check our meters previously and they had no female staff members that currently did any type of reading work. It is thought that Jane may have talked one of her friends into kidnapping my brother, who would have been five, and or myself. The creepiest, scariest part of all of this is that neither my brother or I were made aware of the stalking and potential kidnapping until we were teenagers. I don't know if Jane or her mother were actually watching us for an opportune moment in public or if they were showing up at various functions or school events. So I go to the University of Puget Sound. Fun fact, Ted Bundy went there too. In fact, I lived in the same room as him. We were the only room with a cinder block wall on one side. We knew it was hollowed out because you could hear it when you knocked against the bricks. We never opened it though. So me and my roommate in the fall of 2010 were already hearing weird shit from the walls. All sorts of rumors abound in this room. Schiff Hall, basement. So at Christmas time 2010, I'm not able to go home for the holidays due to illness. I don't get sick very much, so this is odd in and of itself. So I'm the only one in my building, pretty much except for the custodial staff. The first three days are okay, Though, as I had said before, this was a creepy room. Something was just off about it. Day 4 at 6.45 a.m. I had barely slept, like not at all. My dreams were terrifying that night. I can still see it. If you're afraid of clowns, then you're not going to like this description. Lying in bed, I cannot move. I feel as if I am chained down, heavy weights on my arms and legs and chest. 
My sight moves out of my body. I grow smaller, or rather, everything else around me gr grows larger. I spin around to face my body. It is a doll. You know the ones that can open and close their eyes? That kind. Covered in filth. But the crying. Black tears. I can feel my heart in the doll's chest, beating rapidly with fear. I descend, spinning to face back as I do. A haze appears before my eyes. It solidifies slowly. A face. A face with makeup. A clown's makeup. A face contorted in pain. Immeasurable pain. And anger. I can feel fear in my heart. Coldness. Laughter starts ringing in my ears. High pitched like a voice on helium. Or through a voice changer. And all too low at the same time. A knife appears out of the air, and this is when I wake up, cold and sweating. The sun hasn't risen yet, or at least I can't tell that it has, but I get up anyway. I step into the hall and notice an odd smell, but think nothing of it, and walk into the bathroom. And I start up the shower. The water is black. I stand, revolted, thinking that something is wrong with the pipe. Then I notice that it's not particulates in the water. The water is literally black. I pause, not sure what to do. The toilet flushes. There is no one in the building but me. Another flushes. I reach in, turn off the shower, and go back to my room. I get changed and bug a friend from the rugby team to let me shower at his house. He lets me and even gives me a ride. I don't tell him what happened, just that the shower isn't working. We hang out for the day, go to Mad Hat, talk shit about people, flirt with girls, typical 18-year-old stuff. I go back to my dorm room at midnight. I open the door to the basement. The dryer is upside down and halfway down the hall. Fuck. Dryer's in the hall, upside down. It blocks almost everything. I have to climb over it and get around. I feel like an idiot, but brush it off as a prank. Pranks are common in Schiff House, as we do the stupid kid adventure dorm stuff, and we are proud of it. I go to the back of my room and open the door. Things are normal, though my roommate's normally immaculate bed is not made. I can't remember if he made it before he left or not, so that could just be a coincidence. I log into my computer and stay up until about 4am playing video games to pass the time. Lights stayed on because I'm a little creeped out by this point. On day 5, it's 9.30am. I had better sleep that night. That was nice. I always have trouble sleeping. I go for my routine shower. I gingerly turn it on, hoping it's not black. It doesn't shoot anything, but the sound it emits, it's shaking. Not just itself, but the mirror is vibrating. The shower curtains are shaking. It's so loud. It hurt my ears. I stood there, not sure what to do, frustrated. I let out a yell of nonverbal agitation, and it fell silent. Everything stopped. Silence filled the space. If you've ever felt a silence that was heavy, like a weight, you know what I mean when I say I couldn't breathe. And then the water started, and I could. Normal, hot, clean, clear water. I cannot even begin to express the joy that I felt at that moment. After my shower, I got breakfast, and then I chilled in my room with the door open. Around one, the custodian came by and asked about the dryer. I said that I didn't know how it happened, but I helped him move it back. He goes away and I'm alone again. Bang! From next door. The washing room. Bang! And again, metal on metal. I know instantly what this it's the sound of. The washing machine lid is slamming down. 
but it's just me here, and I'm not doing laundry. Bang! Again, the sound echoes. I'm pissed off. I go in there, and bang! I see it slam down on its own accord. Clutchunk! I suck it up, uh, making the sounds. I look into the hall, and my door is shut. I had the door stopper on it. The carpet is torn a little where you can see the stopper slide over it. Fuck everything about this. I leave the building and go to the library. Only time I've ever been. I didn't go back that night. I stayed in the library or walked around all day. Even now, I'm still getting upset recalling this. It's still so unnerving to me. At day 6, 9am, I go back to the dorm. Maybe sleeping during the daylight will work better for me, keeping an eye on whatever is happening at night. I go to my room, unlock the door. Bang! From the laundry room. And again, I glare, but go into my room and close the door, locking it behind me. I don't know why. I never locked that door before. No one in the basement level locks their doors. I climb up to my bed, it's high up, like I was sleeping above the ground, and I pull back the sheets. Red. Very, very red. My sheets are normally cream-colored. I can feel my chest tighten. How long has it been like this? Am I going crazy? Normal thoughts to think in a situation such as this. I reach out a hand and touch the red. It's wet and sticky. I can't even describe the reasoning behind this, but I tasted it. It was blood, coppery, metallic in flavor, slightly sweet. I nearly threw up. The piping for the building runs through above our room. I hear water flowing. I go back to the door and I opened it. I can hear water running in the bathrooms. I go to check and every shower is on. Every sink is on, and all of the toilets are flushing. The same thing is happening in the girls' restroom. It's too much for me. I packed a bag and called a friend. I stayed there until everyone else had returned. I went in the night prior, and nothing special had happened. I never told them, because they all thought I was creepy and crazy to begin with. I know that I should have documented all of this to be more plausible. It's hard to describe the exact reason as to why I didn't think about getting a camera. It felt like total rage mixed with unimaginable fear, and yet curiosity just had enough to keep from running away.